How's it going guys? This is Joe and Tell and this is a live stream. Today I'm gonna have a few topics I'm gonna be discussing. The first is uh, Hi-Fi hi -fi magazines. I went to, uh, what was that today? Barnes & Noble? I'm surprised they're still around. But um, yeah, I went over there and I checked out some magazines. Of course, some Hi-Fi ones, right? So, um, you know, one second here. Let me know if you guys uh, can hear the audio well. Let me know if that's okay or not. If it's clipping. <laughs> so I'm gonna be here looking at the chat um, and trying to answer some questions here. But first I wanna talk about what I, I noticed when I checked out some of these magazines. And then I'm gonna do some Q&A. And then after that, I'll do the unboxing. That's what you're really here for, right? So, yes, 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 real Marianos. <laughs> Hey, that's the wife. Uh, yeah, so so took the family out today. We went to uh, Barnes and Noble, and I of course I looked at some magazines there, and I looked at what were what were they? Uh, Stereophile, the Absolute Sound, and then uh, Hi-Fi Plus. And um, what's up, youth man? Yeah, so I was, took a look at some of those magazines, and I remember looking at those as a kid and thinking, man, like these. These products are crazy expensive, right? And I think, you know, I was I was kind of assuming that when I was a kid, like, you know, when I'm a little bit older, maybe that stuff will be more affordable, right? It won't look so crazy. But I was looking at today and most of those products are way out of reach for a lot of people. Not just me. Um, it's not that I can't afford it. It's just that it, I don't want to afford it, right? So I don't want to spend the price of a car on a pair of speakers. I'm sure some people do, and um, yeah, those magazines are there, and they're there to review those types of products. But um, I was thinking about it, I was like, why, what's up with this? Like, how come all of these magazines are all about reviewing just, you know, the, the crazy, crazy high-end stuff? And um, I, I came to the conclusion that it's not just audio. You know, I think audio kind of gets a bad rap, and audio files kind of get a bad rap for always showing off like high-end stuff. But if you think about it, if you look at some uh, car magazines, right? Or home magazines, you know, whatever you want to look at. Are they going to be showing some normal homes? Are they going to show the, the house that's across the street from you? No, they're probably showing like some crazy houses, some crazy homes that are, you know, spectacular, right? And I think that's what they're doing here with audio. They're trying to show the best of the best you know, money, no option, those types of products. And it kind of makes sense. So I'm into, uh, I'm into cars. And when it comes to cars, it's, uh, you know, again, with the same thing with the magazines. They're not going to show, uh, you know, your everyday, uh, I don't know, Toyota Camry. All right, they're not going to do that. They're going to show some crazy cars that you probably can't afford and most people can't afford. And that's the whole point, right? Um, I think that you know when it comes to all these high-end things those are the products that push push the segment right uh, if it weren't for all these companies that were you know that are spending a ton of money on research and development then that stuff won't trickle down to the more affordable stuff so we kind of have to look at it that way um, unfortunately the problem with audio that I I find is that a lot of the stuff has trickled down into stuff that is more affordable, but a lot of hardcore audiophiles will look at that stuff and say like, well, that's affordable, so it must not be good. Well, that's not really how technology works, right? The way technology works is, you know, stuff keeps getting better and it keeps getting less expensive. And so that's what advancement is all about. And the cool thing about that is there's still room to advance, right? It's not like speakers are perfect, right? Speakers are probably the weak point in almost every system. Uh, converting that electrical signal to uh, something that we can hear, the transducer. So that, that's probably the point where there's the most issues and where there's some the most play, uh, room for advancement. And um, yeah, so I just think about it that way. I think about it as that these magazines are showing the best of the best and hopefully a lot of that stuff, a lot of the technology they're using, whether it be that they're using some advanced materials, 
um, you know, things like that. Hopefully it'll get down to the point where most people can afford it and everybody can have better audio. You know, if you think about it, we can just talk to our systems now. A lot of our systems are smart or we have a Echo Dot or something like that connected to it and we can just tell it what we want to hear. So that's super advanced, right? I don't know how many people would have thought that you could do that, but now you can. Um, let's see here. I'm just looking at some of the comments, making sure. I just want you guys to know that I'm seeing those. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about those hi-fi magazines? You know, I'm wondering what their role is nowadays. Um, now that there's stuff like YouTube, right? And um, anyway, just a thought. Just a thought, just a thought. What do you guys think? Let me check out the comments here. Uh, right, so... Mr. Mufu to you. Nice to see you live. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Youth man he has an awesome channel. Make sure to check him out. Does a lot of uh, home theater stuff. He looks like he has like a crazy home theater setup. So I'm a little bit jealous about that. I'm here in California. I don't know where 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 you're at, Youth man, but over here in California, these uh, housing prices are kind of high. So yeah, no home theater room for me yet. Hopefully soon uh right mr mufu to you again says joe knows tell all right uh brian uh says it's going it's going great loving the content on your channel thank you thank you thank you thank you you guys really keep me going when you you know all these all these positive comments really help out um youth man you're in florida all right sounds good uh let's see what else here uh mr mufu again says i own the house across the street from me baller uh and then uh into it review says he gotta go but hopefully it gets posted so you can watch later all right and uh lunatone says joe thank god for this channel wow okay so yeah let's see here what do you guys think about the the magazines you know what do you what do you feel when you see those magazines like i was looking today and most of them were a lot of focal stuff uh, what is their new one? The Canta? Something like that. Um, very expensive stuff. And stuff that I would say... I'm going to go and say like 99% of the general public will not buy that. And I would go ahead and say that... Maybe 90% of people who would say that they're into audio probably aren't going to buy a lot of that stuff either. So very expensive stuff. Let's see here. What else does it say here? Let me go ahead and switch. Let's do a Q&A. So go ahead and answer some questions. Hopefully you guys have some questions about speakers, two-channel audio, home theater, anything. You know, the NVIDIA Shield that I reviewed. Uh, you can ask me about stuff I have coming that, that's coming up. Uh, yeah, anything. Maybe stuff I've reviewed in the past. Or yeah, just pretty much anything. It's all... Uh, it's open from here on until we do the unboxing. So I'll answer a few questions. Let's see how we do on time. So we're 15 minutes in. Um, let's see. Would be nice. So Eugene says, would be nice to see a review of these Yamo as well. Yamo. That's how, you, that's how you're supposed to say it. Yamo. Jamo sounds kind of cool too. Hold up. Let's see what the wife is saying. She has priority over you guys. She uh, she sends me money, so super chat. Oh, she got me on the big projector. All right, hello. Hi, Gracie. All right, Gracie's my daughter. All right, let's see here. Uh, I think people, so Mr. Mufu again, I think people feel the sound quality is directly related to price. And um, it's not, right? So sound quality and price, they're not... They don't go up at the same at the same level so it probably gets to a point where you know they call it point of diminishing returns right so I don't know how to do this graph but let's say uh, let's say price goes up like this right there's gonna be a point so it, it doesn't go like this where price right am I going the right way is that the right way no this way this way yeah so price price and quality don't go up at the same time, right? It's more like price goes up like this, right? And then 
it probably goes up. Uh, I should do it this way. Goes up to a certain point, and then the price will keep going up. But this is not getting any better. The sound quality is not getting any better. And so you kind of my my goal usually is to try to find that sweet spot. Is where is is the quality going up, and then where does it start to plateau? Where if you spend a dollar more, it's not going to get that much better. But if you spend spend a dollar less, then it's going to be significantly worse. So I look, I try to look for that that specific price point. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, what amp are you going to use on the Yamos? Well, I just did the the video where I uh, redid the the lights on my Marantz 2220B. So that's a vintage uh, receiver. So I can try it on those. I think they're, I'm not sure. I think they're eight ohms, so they shouldn't have an issue. Um, I love that amp. I love the way it sounds. And it's only 20 watts per channel, but I'll, I was doing some research and I think that the way that they used to measure wattage back then uh, and their, you know, it was more stringent. So basically their, uh, what they cared about was really clean watts. So they made sure that when they said 20 watts, that's at a very low distortion rate. Versus right now, we might have receivers that say 100 watts, but at what what distortion rate? Like at 1%, 10%, you know what I mean? So 20 watts on that doesn't sound like 20 watts on a typical amp, right? So I have some small class D amps that are rated at 50 watts or 80 watts, and I feel like this thing can hang. So. That's what I'm gonna be using right now just cause it's all hooked up right there. I don't know if you can see it. Boom. All right, uh, what app are you gonna use? All right, so this one, uh, Jesse says, to me, I just read, I just read them like their catalogs nowadays. I read forums like HeadFi, Reddit, or watch YouTube, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not in the forums too much, um, but I do, I am in uh, on Reddit. Usually in budget audio file, that's my favorite place. I like the, the feeling I get in there. Certain certain groups have different vibes and I just like it. Um, one, because they let me post my videos. You know, I was kind of worried about that because some people are always saying like, hey, you're self-promoting, you're not supposed to do that on Reddit, certain subreddits. But I kind of feel like if the, if the content is budget audiophile, right? And the stuff that I'm reviewing and making content about is budget audiophile gear, then it seems very relevant. Like, why wouldn't people in that group want to see that? Um, and you know, some people might argue, and this is not budget audio file. All those people are cool in there. But, um, you know, I guess the way I think about it is, why would I wait for somebody else to post it instead of, you know, coming from the source, I'm going to post it so everybody can see it right away. But it kind of doesn't make sense on Reddit, like, what, they want somebody else to find it and then post it? I, mean, I don't get it. Anyway, budget audio file is my favorite place on Reddit, you'll find me there. Um, I think, I don't know, just look up Joe and tell, you'll find me. All right. Uh, are you into, uh, Mr. Mufu says, are you into in-ear monitors? Uh, no, I don't, I actually don't have any, but I am interested. All right. Real Marianos, Gracie says, hi. Hi, hi. That's my baby right there. Uh, youth man, I find the law of diminishing return at work. Okay. Um, okay. And he said, you just said that. There's a little bit of a delay, so just know that um, when I'm saying something here and I'm reading the comment, there might be a little bit of a delay. But I'll try to get to your uh, answer your questions as soon as possible. Let's see here. Youth, uh, spot on, Joe. Thank you, youth man. If I ever go to Florida, you got to um, show me around. Dean Krauss, what's your overall feelings on Sirwin Vega speakers? <laughs> Sirwin Vega, um, I don't know if they're making a comeback or what, but I used to be like, I used to be down with Sirwin Vega. They used to have that red cone back in the day. So as many of you know from some of my other videos where I mentioned this, I used to be into like car audio. Cause I mean, when you're young, that's what you have. You don't have a house, right? So you have your car and you can do your system in your, in your car. I mean, I had a system in my room, but I wasn't allowed to play it very loud because, you know, parents would be like, you're shaking the walls, right? Um, but yeah, uh, Sirwin, Sirwin Vega, I remember back in the day, they used to have, uh, like I'm saying, the Sirwin Vegas with the red cone, but I remember them for some, some crazy woofers. I had uh, 
what was it called? The Sirwin Vegas Strokers. And they look crazy. Look it up later. Look up the Sirwin Vegas Strokers. And I went to a, a car show one time where they had the Stroker van. And it was the, the, the loudest van that I've ever heard. Loud, loudest system I've ever heard. They had like a bunch of like, I don't know, 15s or 18s. A whole wall of them. And it was just, it sounded crazy. You had to wear headphones. Hopefully Sirwin Vega makes a comeback. I, I like the way, I like Sirwin Vega. When I think of Sirwin Vega, I think of speakers. So, um, hopefully they make a comeback. Uh, Gene Hunter, what's up, Joe? What would you recommend between the Yamo S803 and the Elac Debut B 6.2s? I haven't heard. I haven't heard them yet. So um, I found these because of uh, Z reviews. You know, he he reviewed them, and usually I I kind of agree with the stuff that he says. You know, um, yeah, I haven't really found a video where like I completely 100% disagree with his assessment of speakers. Um, so yeah, he said that they're good. So hopefully I'm, you know, I'm excited and I'm hoping that they are going to be good. Uh, we'll have to see though. Uh, as far as the B 6.2s, uh, they're, they're good for the price, right? I have right here. Where are they? Over there. I don't know if you see them in the back. Those are some F 5.2s, the towers. Um, honestly, uh, you guys might know, but I'm an ELAC fan, but I'm an ELAC fan because of their UB fives. So I think that the UB5s and the debuts sound completely different. Like they just both have the ELAC logo. They both have, you know, both designed by Andrew Jones, but I don't think that they're the same sound signature even. Um, so I'm super impressed with the UB5s because it's a three-way concentric, has a crazy crossover network. And, you know, sometimes they go on sale for 349, normally 499. But to me, that's what's really amazing. The B6.2, the debuts, stuff like that. I think there are other speaker companies that are manufacturing stuff that are that are really competing. Um, whether they're beating them or not, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe these will. All right, mm, Jesse, have you visited Kenrick Sound YouTube channel or any other channels that showcase speakers or hi-fi gear? No, I, I haven't seen Kenrick. I have not seen that. Um. One second, I got messages coming from other sources here. All right, so Techno Dad, what's up, Techno Dad? Techno Dad's the one who kind of uh, he helps me out and he tells me how to do these live streams because yeah, he's more experienced than I am. And so, shout out to Techno Dad, he's the man. All right, let's see what else is going on here. All right, my wife is tagging me in posts. Okay, so yeah, she's posting that I'm on live. Um. Who's next here? I have an old NAD AVR. Was thinking of these Yamos you're about to review. I can't wait. That's Luna Tone. And Mr. Mufu to you, what's your recommended 2.1 setup for medium volume and high accuracy? Hmm. High accuracy. Huh. High accuracy. Medium volume. Hmm. You know what? Um, I still like to recommend those uh, Fluence AI40s because they're powered, they're Bluetooth, uh, they're using DSP, and when I measured them, they're very flat. And I thought it was mainly the DSP that's, that was kicking in that was allowing it to be that flat, but I actually did a measurement on the passive speaker with no DSP, right? So just the speaker itself, and it was still very flat, so I was amazed by that. The DSP seems to be kicking in more for... Um, for compress co compression so that uh, you don't blow out the speaker. But uh, I like those. I think that they're very accurate. I think that uh, the Vanatu transparent zeros on a desk, they're very accurate. Um, some of the other speakers that I like, like the Pioneer BS22s and these Pioneer FS52 uh, towers and even the UB5s, I like those speakers, but I wouldn't say they're accurate. I, I like them because I like the sound signature. I like that they're laid back and I like that they're easy to listen to. And I like that I can put them in a lot of different places and they sound good. You know, they're very versatile. Mm, Mikey Remy. Remy, all right, that's my daughter's name. Uh, hi Joe, you have heard, well, let me see. You've heard to the ELAC UB5 and 6.5. How do they compare which one do you prefer? I think I just answered that question. The UB5 is a three-way 
and the B6.5 is a uh, two-way. And so I think the 6.5 is impressive because of the amount of bass that it's able to produce for that size. I mean, it's not a tiny speaker, but it's, it's pretty bassy. Like, you get a good amount of bass, and so I think it's impressive to a lot of people who would think that you'd need huge speakers to get that, that type of, of bass. But I think overall, the, the UB5s are just way smoother, um, way more refined, I'd like to say. I don't really like the highs on the 6.2s as much. They're not terrible, but they're not as laid back. So I like the Andrew Jones sound signature, like on these Pioneers, because it's laid back, right? I didn't feel like those were very laid back, but, you know, maybe that's because uh, on the original debuts, people were complaining that the treble was a little bit too rolled off. And so maybe Andrew Jones kind of made some adjustments to brighten that up a little bit. But I, I like that uh, refined, um, low-key sound, you know what I mean? I don't know how else to explain it, but... I just don't want something that's shouty. Like I, I checked out some Polks and um, that's not my favorite sound signature. I don't want to say anything bad about them, but it's not my style. What else here? Uh, all right, so Lunatone, it was these Yamo 803s or Fluence AI40s. Two totally different speakers, I think. I think those are two totally different because the Fluence AI40s, I call them the, the, the sound bar killers. Uh, yeah, they're good if you don't have an amp, right? It's two, it's 199 bucks. I don't know if the price went up or what, but um, yeah, it's self-powered, had DSP built in, had the remote, kind of like checked all the boxes and it sounded really good. Um, I'm hoping that these sound really good. I, I would expect them to sound better, right? Because there is no amp, there's no Bluetooth, there's no remote, there's, it's just, they're just speakers and you still have to add your amp. So... I'm expecting these to be able to play deeper and maybe louder. Yes, lou not maybe, louder. Um, Lunatone, but I have a spare amp, so might as well use it. Yes, correct. All right. Thanks, Mikey. Remy, what do you use to drive the UB5s? So UB5s at home. So this Marantz cannot drive the UB5s. This is made for 8-ohm speakers, and if I try to bump them, either the amp will, will like, turn off or it'll make some it, it's it can't handle it it, it store it's bad it does not like them um, so at home I use a, a Denon x 4100 W uh, that's some a receiver I bought a while back when uh, Atmos was still relatively new and uh, it gets a job done uh, right now I have this Marantz I don't know if you guys can see that but I have this Marantz back there and uh, this thing's a beast this is the SR7013, I don't remember the model number. What are you? Seven. Marantz SR7013, that thing right there. Beast, um, yeah, so I'm supposed to review that. It's just that I'm taking my time, there's a ton of features on there, and I have to recalibrate my whole system, so it's not, it's not an easy task to just review an app like that. I have to do a bunch of stuff, I have to like take out the old app, recalibrate the new one, learn all the features, and this is gonna be on my main system, so Marantz, if you're watching, I'm gonna review them, don't worry. All right, who else? What he said, what are your thoughts on Bic Audio? You know what, I haven't, I haven't tried out Bic Audio, but I've heard a lot of good things about them. Uh, I've seen some subs that they have, and yeah, I've seen some bookshelf speakers that look decent, but I haven't tried them personally. Um, Mr. Mufu to you says Polk sucks. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, people were saying that those signature S15s and S20s were supposed to like beat the 6.2s, the the Elax. I I wouldn't say so. Um, I've had a lot of Polks. They're some of the first speakers that I bought when I could when I couldn't afford too much. Um, I forgot which ones I had, but right now I'm looking at two of them that are some TSX 550Ts. And these were like some of their higher end models. I think when they first came out, they were like a thousand bucks for a pair of these towers. Um, and it's just a Polk sound signature. It's not that they're bad speakers. It's just they have their own sound signature and they'll appeal to some people and they won't for some others. And they don't appeal to me particularly, but they're not bad speakers, I wouldn't say. Um, 
What kind of speaker stands do you use? I have some Pangea LS300s and just recently filled them up with sand and was pretty pleased with the noticeable improvement in sound. Arthur Park. Okay, um, you know what? I don't, I don't have stands that you can fill with sand, but sounds like a good idea. Um, I don't know what you can see and what you can't hear, but um, I have some stands that I built. Nah, I'm not gonna pick those up. Some stands that I built. I have some cheap, cheap ones over there. I have some other ones over there. Yeah, I have, you know, I have some decent stands, but um, yeah, I guess that would be better if you can fill them with sand, right? Because they don't vibrate and make any, any noise. I have uh, Tom Chan says I have NAD C. 368. Is it NAD or NAD? Because that sounds kind of funny. Uh, na okay. Is it good to pair with a UB5? I guess the number one thing, I don't know about that particular amplifier, but what you need to know is whether it can handle a 4 ohm load because that's what the UB5s are. Uh, right. Love his NAD amp. Okay, so Lunatone says he has one too. Uh, Lunatone says Polk, Polk doesn't suck. <laughs> uh, NAD OG stuff hits okay alright so you guys are talk talking amongst yourselves I like that uh, Polk blows their crossovers I think not Ned <laughs> uh, I had to I had to say it I had to say it I've been using Polk since I got my first paycheck now I'm on the LSIM 707 I think that's like their their higher end stuff and loving it and that's M, I don't know how to say your name, M-P-I-T-O-G-O. -O. How are we doing on time here? Okay. Um, maybe a few more questions. I know you guys want me to open this thing. I want to open this thing. I waited for you guys. Pitogo. M. Pitogo, okay. I still say Nad sometimes too. <laughs> Um, so, okay, just real quick about the Polk thing. So I actually picked up those Polks. I was planning on reviewing them, but my policy is to not take the time to review a product that I don't really love, right? Because I'm not here to try to damage a company. I've said that before. I'm not trying to hurt a company or their sales, but I'm also, you know, not trying to promote them, right? So I think making a video about it is actually promoting them as well. Um, even if I say I don't, you know, particularly uh, like them, but my problem with them was they kind of they had this the Polk sound signature, which is like the the treble was just too much for me. I didn't even measure them. Um, the treble was just harsh to me, and and they didn't have a crazy amount of bass, and so that combination of not a lot of bass and a lot of treble kind of kind of sounds like a loud speaker. Like the speaker can get loud. Thank you, Lunatone. Lunatone, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's really awesome. My wife is probably crying right now because she always cries whenever somebody uh, gives a super chat because, you know, we appreciate it so much. You know, I, I don't expect it. Believe me, I, I'm appreciative, but I don't expect it. So when somebody does that, she gets all teary. She's probably, she's, she's probably at home tearing up right now. Uh, so thank you. Thank you again. Uh, yeah, anyway, those those Polks, I guess what I'm saying is they I think that they're trying to be impressive at Best Buy because that's where they're mostly sold at, right? When you hear them at Best Buy, they have to cut through all that noise. So the popular speakers that are there on the floor where uh, near the TVs, you know, Magnolia and those, those places where they show you speakers and they have some higher end speakers, that's different. I'm talking about Polk and Klipsch are in that area right beside the TVs where the sound bars are. And I think that if you're to demo them, you have to hear sound that cuts through all the noise, right? And so when you hear that sound signature of uh, real sharp highs, it sounds clear. Like, oh man, those sound really clear. And so I think that's what they're going for, but in my place, not not the best. Brian, you are the... Oh. Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys so much. You know, um, when I do this stuff, I'm just enjoying myself. So I kind of feel like it's it's kind of weird. I always try to tell people to do what you enjoy. And the reason I say that is because it's hard to be bad at something that you really like, right? Like you don't mind spending the time on something that you enjoy. So I was at home right now, just ate dinner, and I knew that I wanted to open this, but I wanted to make sure to share it with you guys because I'm excited, right? So it's kind of cool that 
you know, the fact that I'm getting such support from you guys doing something I enjoy. So it's like a win, 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 win. All right, back to this. Thank you again, Brian. I, all right, I power you Polk with Macintosh. Oh, okay. Polk with Macintosh, what a combo. Hey, I'm, I'm still open, you know? That's why I have some Polks. I own these Polks, I paid for these Polks. I have the center channel that goes with it. And they, I think they sound really good, but you know, just less forgiving, I guess you could say. Maybe if I had a better treated room, this room is a little bit echoey, so. Um, oh, what's up, new PS City? Does more wattage equal better sound or louder sound as people say? What is your view on that? Aw, uh, I feel like you're setting me up. You know the answer to that. So, um, usually you think, you know, well, to answer the first part, more wattage typically, just generally speaking, is better. More power is better, right? Because you don't get to the point of clipping as quickly, and so that's good. Uh, a lot of people will say that it's better to have a, uh, an amplifier that's more powerful than the recommended wattage on your speakers because you're more likely to blow out your speakers with uh, an amp that's not powerful enough because you'll clip, meaning the, the wave is not a smooth wave. It becomes like a sharp wave, and that's not good for speakers. Um, that's what you'll hear a pop and you might over uh, get some over excursion and blow out the the voice coils on them with distortion um now it's a tough question because it depends on how you arrive at those watts i would say um if if they're both clean watts i would prefer an app that has more power and if the power is clean so you don't really want i'm not going to get into like class ab versus versus you know class a versus uh, class D amps. Um, I'm just going to say that, you know, if you read an amplifier, it's a tiny little amplifier and it says it's 150 watts, probably isn't, right? Um, it just, you know, a little mini power brick, probably isn't. What they're probably doing is rating it at an extreme amount of distortion. And yeah, the meter is going to say that it's producing 150 watts or whatever, but it's not 150 watts that you want to hear, right? More like 20 watts or something. So, um, yeah, is, is it louder? So, uh, one thing you have to know about decibels is, a uh, it's not a linear thing. So a hundred watt amplifier is not half as loud as a 200 watt amplifier. It doesn't scale like that, right? I think it's, um, double the power is three or six decibels. I forget. I forget. I forget. Double power. Yeah, like going double the power is either three or six decibels higher. You guys can correct me over here. Tell me which one it is. But uh, it it takes 10 decibels for something to sound twice as loud, right? So doubling your power is not going to make something sound twice as loud. It takes 10 decibels. Uh, that's because of psychoacoustics and all kinds of weird stuff. All right. Let's see here. Uh, Got to catch up. Mr. Wufu says, Luna Polk sucks. <laughs> Dean Krause, did you go to school for what you know about sound and stuff or just learned as you went? I'm a new subscriber. Thank you, Dean Krause. I like that last name. That's a strong last name right there. Um, did I go to school for what I know? No, no, no. I was actually, I, I studied to be a, an electrical engineer, but I decided I did not want to do that. I did all the math classes, all the stuff that I needed to do. But uh, I like business. So I ended up going for business. That's what I went to school for, um, and I have my own business. That's kind of my thing. Um, yeah, I'm kind of self-taught, right? Just more self-taught. I just read, and I'm no expert. Thank you, A M Pitogo. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you guys so much. This is so much fun. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, one. Uh, let me see and catch up here. Uh, and Patogo, you want to hear bass with no sub? Listen to my uh, LSIM 707 playing Kim Petrus or Daft Punk. All right, which which track specifically? I'll check them out. Um, yeah, I'll check them out. Mikey Remy, maybe in a future video you can show us how to set up listening area speaker placement. I like how you answer to comments. Yeah, I do my best to try to answer all the comments uh, on my videos. I feel like that's really important to 
you know, to respond to people. I think that's the point of YouTube, right? If you wanted a one-way medium where somebody's going to just give you content and you're not supposed to respond back, then you can watch TV. You know what I mean? That There's a ton of that. That's been going on for a long time. But I think the, the ability to interact with people and to build a community, that's what makes YouTube special. That's what's so cool about it. Um, so, yeah, I try to answer all the questions. Uh, right, one of the product lines doesn't define the entire company or, or offerings. You are correct. That is true. Um, and that's the problem with Polk, right? So they, they have some really inexpensive entry-level stuff. And so one might assume that if you go with Polk, then it sounds like those entry-level speakers. And that's not really fair. Um, but I would say that these were a 1000 bucks a pair when they were brand new. So... You know, I think I have a general idea that those aren't the cheapest speakers. They're not the most expensive, but, you know, I think I have an idea what the Polk sound signature is, and it's just not my favorite sound signature. Uh, right. Uh, youth man, new wattage also depends on the sensitive sensitivity of your speakers. My Cliff Lascalas are 104 dB. I didn't hear much, if any, different between the Halo A52 Plus and just my Marantz S. R8012. Damn, you got you got even the, the better Marantz. Jealous. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's true too. The sensitivity of your speakers matters a ton, and those clips are like 104 dB. That's how sensitive those those are. That's ridiculous. So, hold up. I could feed it one watt, one watt, and it'll play 104 dB because like 85 dB is the reference level, and Youth Man's saying that his clips. Uh, are 104 dB sensitivity. Is that right? Am I reading that right? <laughs> That's crazy. And uh, Youth Man also says double power is three decibels. So three decibels is not a ton. Um, double the power. So back to the question about whether power, um, how much that matters. So three decibel gain is equal to me adding another speaker. Or let me, let me uh, let's, let's just say I have a speaker, right? And I add another woofer to it. I'm just generally speaking, I know there's a lot, of, but if I add another woofer, typically that's gonna give you an extra three decibels. So that's the same as doubling, going from 100 watts to 200 watts. All right, uh, Andrew Mercier, have you ever thought about trying to make your own speakers? I've made a lot of my own speakers, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think where you can find them. If you go on Reddit and look up my name, Joe Intel, you'll see some old posts and I have some links on Imager. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I'll link to here. I don't know. I'm already behind, but I'll try to find it. Imager. And I have some of the, the builds that I did. But yeah, I think that that's important to know how to build your own speakers, right? Let's see here. Let me go to albums here. Hopefully I'm not covering up this. All right. Joeintel. Okay, so that's easy. Joeintel.imager.com. Here, I'll link right here. You might find some stuff there. All right. Uh, yeah, making your own speakers is awesome. I love it. And it's a sense of pride, right? I'm never going to sell the speakers that I built. Uh, if you're interested in that, I, I would highly, highly, highly recommend the overnight sensations that you can find on Parts Express. It's a kit. Uh, they also have one called a C-Note that sells for uh, C-Note, 100 bucks. And um, the C-Note is supposed to be better. It's supposed to technically be better. But for some reason, I enjoyed building the Overnight Sensations more. I think it's because the cone looks really cool. But it's a great place to start if you want to learn. Uh, all right. Chico L. Wash. I hope. I don't know if I said that right. What do you think of the Fluence AI-40s? Is the hissing sound a problem? So I've talked to them, and they said that they've actually resolved that issue. And it was a bad batch of uh, power supplies. Right, so I cannot confirm that, but that's what they told me. Hopefully that is the case, because other than that hissing, that was the only issue that I really found. Other than that, they're awesome speakers. But um, even then, even with them, I that's the main reason why I didn't uh, recommend the AI-40s for near field, because you can hear them when you're up close, but if you're at a distance, you won't hear the hiss. It's just, you don't want that at all, right? Let's see here, Wookie Balls. So Polk S60 or Klipsch RP260F. Uh, haven't tried 
I haven't tried those. Maybe uh, maybe uh, Youth Man can ch uh, chime in on that. Uh, New PS City, awesome. Thanks for the info. And Pitogo, Transylvania, Kim Petra, or Solar Sailor, Daft Punk. Okay. All right. Youth Man, just catching up here. Uh, no Polk suck. Good night, Joe. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, all right, Youth Man. I'm sorry I was incorrect about the sensitivity of my Las Colas. 105. <laughs> what? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's hilarious. <laughs> 100 d and 5 db sensitivity that uh, that sounds like that doesn't even sound realistic <laughs> dean kraus oh man thank you so much dean kraus you are awesome thanks for the super chat I, I don't know what else to say i'm just very thankful very thankful to you guys and um you guys keep me going you know what i mean it keeps me motivated because this stuff takes a lot of time I, i'll i'll spend a lot of time making these videos and to show that you guys appreciate it, that makes it all worth it, right? If nobody was watching, I'd probably still do it, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put more and more and more into it as I, I am right now. Uh, let's see, what's the difficulty level on building your own speakers? 10 being very hard. Mm, depends, if you're gonna build from scratch, I would say it's a 10, right? Good speakers, yeah. To build some really, really, really good speakers, a 10 difficulty. Even these big companies can't make great speakers, and they have a ton of resources, right? Um, now, if you're talking about some of these um, kits that you can get on Parts Express, I would say difficulty level would be, for somebody with a little bit of experience, maybe a five or six, you know what I mean? Especially if you have some woodworking experience, it helps. Um, everything else is just kind of like following, inst following instructions. I mean, if you can follow an Ikea ikea thing it's like it's like building something for my ikea um youth man uh that's why i'm able to drive all 11 of my clip speakers easily to reference levels with the rants sr8012 correct me if i'm wrong youth man but is reference level 85 decibels that's what i hear because 85 decibels doesn't sound very loud um Andrew Mercier, New PS City. The difficulty is what you make it and how adventurous you are to start. I just made my first passive crossover last night, and I'm eager to hear how my new bookshelf speakers sound. Uh, and Patogo, other than the Polks, bashing this is fun. I'm not bashing. We're not bashing on Polk. We're not bashing on Polk. No, no, no. I will say that I have these for sale on Craigslist, and uh, nobody's picked them up yet. So I might have to lower the price on those. Yeah, I guess nobody's interested in Polk anymore right now. Nah, no, no, no hate on Polk. Call me up, Polk. Show me some of your new stuff. We'll see what's up. Um, let's see here. What's up? What's up, Adam Casper? How you doing, Youth Man? My first speakers are Polk RT 800s. I bought a pair of clips, and they just had so much more detail. Okay, I haven't heard of the clips. I gotta check out clips. Um, I was hearing things in the music the Polk didn't produce. Everyone has a different preference. Yeah, of course you heard a, a bunch of difference because, uh, you know, you're at 105 dB at 1 watt, so you're... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, the clips have that horn, right? It's not the Polk sucks. They just sound different. Some love them, some don't. Just some love clips and others hate them. Mikey Remy, I hate... Oh, I hate... I have white MB42X2. I thought I was crazy to paint them, but they look a hundred times better. That's, oh, yeah. <laughs> hold up, hold up, right there. Hopefully I don't disconnect anything. Okay. MB42Xs or what? Mine are all chipped, I gotta redo these or, or wrap them. But yeah, yeah, I think they look a lot cooler. Stormtrooper, <laughs> Stormtrooper, look, come on. All right, uh, Ampitogo, have you heard anything in the totem line? No, I, I hit them up. And uh, they didn't respond to me. So no love from Totem yet. But I, I, I was recommended Totem from a friend of mine. And uh, yeah, I guess he used to work at a, a hi-fi a hi shop in like Virginia area or something like that. And uh, yeah, he said Totem is something I should look at. Interested. H. Riley say, says, what up, Pinoy? What's up? What's up? Uh, Pinoy, Filipino, Filipino, Filipino. That's what Pinoy is. Uh, nice to see you here, Youth Man. Yeah, Youth Man's all, all like, he's everywhere. Youth Man, you're everywhere, man. I see you everywhere. I like that. You're involved, and you're really helping to build that community. 
So I appreciate that. And thanks for the shout out on um on uh Techno Dad's video um, on the and what was that? Nvidia Shield. I think we should start opening this thing. It's time, right? It's time. All right, let's switch over to here. This is let's let's unbox these Yamo S 803s. All right. All right. Here they are. Boom. All right. Let's see. Okay, so Youth Man says 85 with peaks to 105 dB. Got it. All right. Using my key. I'm very excited. I, I really hope that these are as awesome as uh, what CEO said on his channel. I've actually owned Yamos before. Um, and they had a very like distinct sound signature. Very different. I remember them being very dynamic. Like you ever you ever hook up like a how do I say this? Like you ever unplug your RCA cables while your system is on and it kind of makes that boof, that popping sound. Not like a harsh popping, but you hear the speaker like boof. I felt like the, the Yamos were like that, where they just like they wanted they wanted to move. So um, very dynamic. How else can I say? They just seemed like they were lightweight um, speakers where they would start start and stop like immediately. Like boop. You know, so when somebody says a, a fast, uh, like the speed of a driver, or the speed of a woofer, means like when it goes out, if it's a heavy, a heavy cone, right? There's something, you know, in physics, inertia, right? So it wants to keep moving. So if it's a heavy cone, it'll be like boom. Let's say the signal is an impulse, like boom, right? It'll go boom. And it'll take a while to stop. Versus a lightweight speaker, it'll like boom. And it'll stop immediately, right? And that's what I remember from the Yamos that I had. Hopefully these have that same sound signature because that was kind of cool. All right, so I'm not going to be able to read all the comments at this time because I'm going to be unboxing this. So, All right, so there's the box. They always have this image on the box when they ship it. I don't know if that's a great idea because... If I were a UPS guy and I liked speakers, you know, these might just disappear, right? Not a good idea, guys. Make it, set it in a plain box and then have the, another box inside of it. All right, so, manuals. All right, so, the speaker grills. These are the coolest grills I've ever seen. I'll show you in a second. Here. You see those? They're like this, I don't know what do you call this, tweed? These are the grills here. They don't look cool. I, I've noticed a lot of stuff has this design. This is kind of an old school design. Like a lot of the old speakers had this, but in like brown. <laughs> but yeah, if you notice like the Google uh, Google Home speakers, a lot of them have that kind of like material, kind of make it look like more friendly and homey, right? All right. So here are the speakers. Ah. Weight is decent, not super heavy. All right, there's one. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on the floor. Here's the other one. And let me not smash my, uh, my MacBook here. <laughs> Moment of silence. Ah, uh, these are pretty cool. Here, check out the check out the shape of this box. Can you see that? 
not a square. Trapezoid. Wider here than on top. This port, I'm, I'm a sucker for front ports that are slotted. Such a sucker for those. I think they have those on what, like KRK rockets? You get this one out. Yes, so white. Oh, so, all right. My wife Angela's here, the real Mariano's. The yes, so white speakers. So that wife is uh, is okay with them. Those are handsome. Yes, yes, yes. Let me see what else you guys are saying in here. Uh, all right. Clips RP600 or Steve Guttenberg, Speaker of the Year. Okay. Um, opinions on the JBL Studio 590s. Haven't heard them. New to the channel, loving the content, thank you. Uh, saw the video, I've always loved the sound of B&W, but their real nice gear gets very pricey. Love the style though. Youth man, have you seen the um, B&W, the new 600 series uses their new continuum cone that was exclusive only on the 700 series and above? I don't know, maybe something to check out, the 600 series. Uh, let's see here. I own Sean's Totem Hawks. Oh, that's funny. He got his. Um, I've had Yamos for 10 years now. I think they're great. I think I'm way more excited than I should be right now. Uh, Lunatone. Those grills look pretty good. Love white speakers. Looks pretty clean. Splot for, okay. Those look sweet. Shape helps reduce standing waves inside, I believe. Yes, correct. So, you know, typically if everything is parallel, then you'll have stuff bouncing like Theoretically, infinitely, but not really the case. But um, yeah, it helps that the, the shape is different. That's why this is cool. Is this hooked up? Uh, you know, the Wharfdales. Here's here's a size comparison. These are those Wharfdale um, Diamond 11.2s. 11.1, sorry. 11.1s. And they have this... What is this, What is the name of this shape right here? I don't know, like, I, wanna, I always want to say like boat tail design. But it looks like a boat, right? I don't know if that's what they're called, but that also helps with standing waves. All right. All right, so let's see here. More comments. Those look sweet. Shay, okay. RSL also does slots. Haven't heard them. Wife says you can keep them. Let's see them with the grills. Okay. Wife wants to see them with the grills. Magnetic grills. I'm also a sucker for magnetic grills. Oh, I'm such a sucker for this stuff. Um, those look sexy, all white. So I guess we don't have to hear how they sound, right? Because they look good. That's all that matters, right? Um, Real Marianas. I think I might like the looks of this better than the AI-40s. What? That's crazy talk. Uh, cone shape. Color of the wave guide is sick. I love the magnetic grills. Winner in the looks department. Are you going to hook them up and do first impression? Break them in for a hundred hours? Um, I can hook them up. I can, yeah, I'm gonna leave them naked. Yes, I'm, I agree with youth, man. They're, they're gonna stay naked for a little while. Cause my kids are not here today. So, oh, I'll show you some more details. How about that? So, uh, yeah, you see that, that's obvious. Yeah, yeah, that Yamo, like, I can already tell the cone feels like super lightweight. Like, they just, light is good for, for speakers. So, you want them to be stiff, and you want them to be lightweight. Those are two good properties. Here's the base of it, that other color. That's sweet. The two-tone is sweet. Has the rubber feet, which I like. And on the top, this is their, like, mount if you want to connect their Atmos speaker. And the whole idea behind that is you connect the... Look at the back. So this is not bi-wired. You connect the regular ones on one of these. I forget which one. But um, let's say, let's, I'm assuming this one's the Atmos speaker. You hook, hook it up back here. And these are connections, right? So you just put pop the speaker on top and it gets connected. I mean, that's cool. That's cool. But um, yeah, I don't see that as a big deal. I don't know why they couldn't have just connected up here. It's not like a big difference connecting down here versus up here, whatever. 
Um, this is a sweet little, little piece. I don't know. Can you see that? It says Yamo right there. That's cool. What else do you see here? Yeah, waveguide. Not much else. Yeah, I'm gonna hook them up. I, you know what I was gonna do? <laughs> I was gonna say, cause I do have a Patreon. Make sure to check it out. I have a, a podcast that I do on my Patreon, and it starts at like a buck. You know, some people do a dollar, five bucks, whatever. Um, but I try to do exclusive content, so I do a podcast that's about 30 minutes, and I try to do it like once or twice a month. Um, I also sometimes release stuff on there that I don't release on YouTube, um, some behind the scenes stuff. But I was gonna say, you know what, I'll hook them up right now, but the first impression will be on on my Patreon. What do you guys think about that? Would that be messed up? Like, I'll hook them up, but my reaction will be on Patreon. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Everybody's like, just hurry up and hook them up. Love the decoration, okay. All right, very classy, elegant. Bro, just play the, the speakers, holy shit. Uh, sexy speakers, but will they sound good? Uh, at the top of the connected wire, there are four connections instead of two. Interesting technology though. Ever listen to Paradigm speakers? I have heard Paradigm speakers. They sounded good. All right, leave them there, okay. Let's do this. All right, Techno Dad is messaging me. He's talking about all kinds of stuff except for this. Bro, I'm, I'm doing a live stream like you recommended. Hold up. Got a cheap dollar. Let me just message him. Bro, I'm doing a live stream like you recommended right now. <laughs> okay. Leave the speakers naked, not you. Oh, ho, ho, ho. All right, let's do this. Um, I wanna make sure you guys can see what's going on, so let me move this over here. Turn the camera a little bit. Move this light a little bit. All right, I probably have to turn this up. All right. All right. Move, move, move. You guys can see what I'm doing over there. So right now I have these connected. Banana plugs, I always tell you guys, they're the best. So height, okay. So the top one is the height speaker. Boom. All right. This one here. Okay, so I won't tow them in too much. What are you guys saying over here? Did you pay? Well, yes, I did pay one ninety nine, but on uh, on Amazon. All right, all right, cool. Make sure you guys can see what's going on over here. Get the light over there. All right, so. I'm gonna play some music. We'll see how this goes. Here's that new light that I was talking about in my gift guide. Cool little light, right? Yeah. I don't know if that does anything. All right, so I'm just gonna stream some music. Boom, this on, on. Have my little tube buffer there. Shoot, what am I gonna play that's not gonna get, get flagged? I'm gonna have to mute this. 
Let me see what's up here. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to have to play these uh, test tracks that I always use. I don't want to use them, believe me. Alright. Show and tell. Playlist. Alright. Female vocals. second because I have a test track um, that I use that is not that I don't want to get a copy strike on it's this song so you guys check this out on your system actually check out this old song um, at last by Etta James um, there's some hard pans where the music is you know instruments are coming from here and then her voice if your system is good if your system is good it should sound like She's a little bit off center, I think a little to the left, and she should sound like like tall, right? Like the voice should sound like big vertically. Not so much wide, but big vertically. And also when the when the snares hit, you should you should be able to hear them outside of your speakers. You know, it shouldn't be confined within the two speakers. You should hear them outside. That's what I've heard on some of the the better speakers that I have. Um, so I'm going to play that. It's this song right here. You know that song. I'm gonna have to mute it real quick. Second. All right. All right, mute.
Okay, okay. All right, so I, I have an idea. Uh, see you guys, everybody who had to go, see you. Um, if you want, if you want my reaction, then uh, Joe and Tell, uh, my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Joe and Tell, on Instagram. Uh, my name is Joe and Tell, and I'll have my reaction. No, I'm just kidding. That's messed up. <laughs> uh, oh, Techno Dad's up in here. What's up? Um, you gotta wait for my full review, but I will say they do not suck. How about that? Is that enough? Techno Dad, what's up? What's up? Um, let me see who else is in here. Just catch up real quick. All right, jacket came on oh, live stream. Just turned on G rated, P nine. Okay. Z. Um. Alan Walker. Yes, you know what's up. Uh, um. So the bass, you know, so on Z's uh, sound demo, the bass sounded pretty weak, especially compared to the the B six point twos. They didn't sound weak right now. No, they didn't sound weak. Um, goodbye. New speakers hooked up. <laughs> um, okay, At Last, yeah. At Last is the song. Boom, what's up? I do more home theater than I do choose two channel. Past midnight, see you later. Thank you guys for whoever uh, helped out on the super chat. Thank you guys. Uh, okay, what else? I can respect that. In my the front bass port is definitely an homage to the KRKs. Twelve thirty. Oh, okay. Uh, what's up? I got back from DJing a holiday party. Techno dad, you got like a bunch of jobs, man. You're like one of the hardest working guys I know. Front ports are great. In the, okay, I saw the photo. Nice setup. Nine forty here. Almost time for bed. Twelve forty here. Yamo does not suck. Got it. Yeah. So, uh, I will be doing. Giving my response in more detail on my Patreon because I, I have to do something special for those guys. They're they're helping me out on a regular basis, on a monthly basis. So I have to offer them something. But uh, what I will say, yes, uh, yeah, Yamo is owned by Clips. You're correct. Um, what I will say is, they don't suck. They don't suck. I don't know if you can tell by my smile, but yeah, they they don't suck. Anyway, it's getting late, and I've been doing this for a while. So I hope you guys like the video. Uh, you know, you know what to do: like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff to be notified when I upload. Um, just quick insight: some of the newer videos that I'm gonna do, I have a gift guide for people who are into videography, photography, or people who are uh, aspiring YouTubers. That's gonna be uh, a video I have coming up next. What else? Um, just for fun, I have some Bose 301. So Bose. They never uh, show their frequency response, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and show what they are. Hopefully, I don't get sued for that. I guess you can't get sued for that, right? I don't know. Hopefully not. 